welcome back to the fire and water cooking channel I'm Darren and today I'm gonna to do series uh, part two of the series that I've been doing on the basics of sous vide and today we're gonna to cover the equipment so that's one of the bigger things people get confused about what they actually need to get started cooking sous vide once they get their heads wrapped around what it is and what uh, what it can do they also want to know what I need and one of the One of the first things you're going to need is an sous vide circulator of some kind or a standalone sous vide unit. Um, this particular model here is a basic sous vide circulator. It's made by Gourmia and all it really does is um, you know, keep the water at a certain temperature and circulate it so that it stays at that temperature. This one's pretty basic. It doesn't have Wi-Fi or any fancy controls on it. Uh, it's pretty easy to use. They're manual controls. You pretty much set the time that you want to cook and the temperature you want to cook at. Press start. As soon as it gets to the t temperature that you want to cook at, an alarm will go off. You press, press set again and then it will count down the time. As soon as the time's done, it will go set off another alarm. You come shut it off and your food is ready. So these start anywhere from 30 to $40 all the way up to a couple hundred, depending on what kind of, uh, you know, functions and different options they may have. You can get a good basic one like this Gourmia is like in the $60 range. Um, GSV 140 from Gourmia. And I've had this for over six months and I've cooked with it three or four times a week sometimes for you know 48 60 hour cooks at a time and I've had no problems with it so like I said I, these are you know this one's a pretty basic model there they do also make models with Wi-Fi control or Bluetooth control um, where you can control it with a application from your phone that hooks to your either your Wi-Fi in your house or you can just stand with your you know if you're within range you can use it with Bluetooth so those are just options you know if you want to mess around with that you don't need the Wi-Fi or the Bluetooth sometimes some of the models like the Jewel and the Innova have recipes and, and stuff built into it that you can use with it that makes it more easy for people that are um, new to sous vide cooking they can just pick steak you know medium rare press a button and the unit will cook for you so so that makes it does make it easier it also adds to the cost so you know the more options and just like anything just like a car or anything the more options you have added to the unit you're going to be paying more for it i know the jewels like almost 200 dollars, but you can't access the controls except for by a smartphone using wi-fi or bluetooth so so just keep that in mind um you know you don't really need to, to get the most expensive unit to start out with you know get something basic to try it out that's what I did I got something that was I knew was gonna you know be a better quality but basic so I could try out the cooking method and see if I liked it before I started spending any more money this particular unit by Gourmia is a multi cooker you could also start out that way these are good for people who live in apartments or college students or somebody that doesn't have a big kitchen and store a, whole, a bunch of different equipment because what this thing can do is act as a crock pot you can do cook rice in it you can cook uh, um, stews all that kind of same thing you could do in a crock pot but you can also you know has a rice cooker sous vide function it has about seven or eight different functions that you can actually use this for and they all work pretty well the only thing that you have an issue with with a unit like this is you don't have a whole lot of space that you can uh, you know cook in they're also good as backup units um, if you want to use it for you know if you're cooking meat in your your normal setup you can cook vegetables in this one so um, it's all what you're looking for they also make standalone just plain sous vide units that are similar to this but like I said you run into size constraints and some of them are actually a lot more expensive than getting an immersion circulator now we're going to go into the containers what kind of container you do you need to do sous vide and I tell everybody you don't really need to buy an extra container if you already have one at home um, if you have a big stock pot 
or a big roasting pan that's you know deep you can use that um, I happened to buy this or actually got this for Christmas uh, when I asked for my sous vide unit and this is a polycarbonate um, food container which you can get pretty much at any um, restaurant supply store you can get them on Amazon I have links below for those as well but um, what and all it really does you're looking for something that's a hard plastic here that uh, can take you know a good amount of heat up to 250 degrees so it's not going to melt and that will hold your uh, immersion circulator when it clips to the side so it doesn't move around doesn't bend you don't want to get one of the plastic containers that's uh, used for like storage or anything because they're not as thick and hard plastic they kind of once they start getting hot they'll you know get a little loose and get you know break easy leak these are kind of designed to take on and not really break so also you can buy a cooler um, I use a cooler um, for my bigger cooks like if I do a big brisket or if I do a couple pork butts stuff like that I'll use an actual cooler that I converted all I really did I took a Coleman deep uh, cooler it's a stacker cooler and I cut a hole in the lid to stick the immersion circulator in and that works real well for your bigger bigger type cook so I usually if I have a couple if I'm cooking a lot of pork uh, for pulled pork for people I'll use that cooler if I'm doing racks of ribs if I'm doing you know big huge brisket I'll use that as well so you can get these type of containers on Amazon anywhere from 25 30 40 bucks um, that, that are pretty basic some of them will you can buy the lid for them this particular one didn't have a lid available for it when I bought it so I actually ended up making my own little um, made up lid here with, with wine corks and you can also use saran wrap to cover or aluminum foil or some other way and all you're trying to do when you have a lid or you use any other method is to uh, eliminate evaporation and to be able to keep that temperature um, more stable so when you're cooking for a longer period of time you know like 10 15 20 hours you're wanting to have very little evaporation you want to keep as much of that water in there as possible so that's why you cover it um, use the uh, plastic wrap or what have you you use a um, container no matter so. what it is if it's a plastic container if it's a stock pot if it's uh, anything um, that you're going to use you got to make sure that you protect your countertop if you're going to put it on a counter um, to cook use uh, either pot holders some kind of trivet like this uh, silicone trivet something set it on top of because you don't want it on top of a granite or wooden countertop because it will affect the finish on it even though this is granite if I left this on here for let's say I did a 24-hour cook on steaks um, directly on it it's going to discolor the granite because there is a coating on your granite and most of your uh, even your um, if you have uh, wood or um, any other kind of um, countertop has some kind of coating on it you're going to have a certain amount of heat for a long period of time so make sure you use pot holders trivets a couple you know dish towels that you're going to set it on or you can set if you're using a pot you can set it on your stove top um, you just want to make sure you put something under it so it doesn't discolor your countertop so I wanted to make sure I touched on that because that's that is very important next step from containers is actual rack systems and racks aren't really necessary to get started they just make just like a, with a lot of different um, uh, accessories they make life a little easier especially a rack like this when you're cooking a lot of you know some steaks or you know roast this is an adjustable rack where you can take these out and, and adjust it they actually make it to where it'll actually hold it down in the water real easy so that they don't float um, sometimes a lot of the meats can float like pork uh, beef with a lot of fat in it um, some vegetables they float real real bad so you, you need something in there to hold it down you can also get a rack like this which is a from Ikea it's actually a I think a pot lid rack 
I think it was like seven dollars at Ikea I use this a lot because it's stainless steel so it won't rust it um, it's kind of heavy it probably weighs a good you know half a pound or so and it's flexible so I can use it to hold steaks down and tighten it up or I can turn it over and hold the roast down with it um, so I use this a lot to uh, for oddball shaped stuff and that's all you're really doing with these racks is you're trying to keep the food under the water so they're not necessary but sometimes they make things a lot easier There's no hope so now let's talk about bags things that you need to put um, your food into to be able to cook it um, a lot of people will buy a vacuum sealer a lot of people will uh, use Ziploc bags you don't need to buy a vacuum sealer to cook sous vide you can use a regular Ziploc bag and you can use the display water displace or air displacement method um, what you do is uh, you can Google it or look it up on YouTube you take a, a bag with the food in it you stick it in the water and then when you stick it in the water the air is naturally getting being pushed out by the water so you stick the bag of food into the water uh, almost all the way up to where you can seal it then you push any of the remaining air out that may be at the top then you seal the bag and then you can just put it right into your water bath and you can clip it to the side of the of the container and it usually will stay down pretty good so but i i actually chose to buy a vacuum sealer because i use it for other things as well and i find that easier for me to do um, it's cheaper because you can buy the rolls of generic vacuum sealer bags for cheap and they come out they turn out cheaper than the uh, Ziploc bags so it's all um, you know personal preference as far as that goes so if you don't have a vacuum sealer you don't need to buy one to uh, you know do cook sous vide but just like with other accessories it does make it a little easier to store your food what I do um, since I do use a vacuum sealer I actually when I buy meat I buy it in bulk usually and I will vacuum seal it and freeze it much when I buy the meat I vacuum seal it season it throw it in the freezer when it's time to cook grab it out of the freezer throw it in the bath and and get it cooking add a little bit of time you know for the for uh, it being frozen and that's it so that comes down to personal preference but you know uh, they also on vacuum sealer bags a lot of people don't know that they make different sizes of bags they actually have you know the 11 inch wide the 8 inch wide but they also have what's called the expandable vacuum sealer bags that are pleated that will actually open up so you can use them for bigger meats like brisket or pork butt um, they're a little bit more expensive than the regular vacuum sealer bags but they work real well uh, I have you know, especially in my Facebook group a lot of people they just want to do a brisket for the first time they don't have those type of bags so they try to cook it in the packaging from the store which I never recommend but um, if you buy the expandable bags you can just get one roll of them I think it's like 25 bucks for a roll of them it'll probably last you a good you know two or three months unless you cook brisket every week but um, they make it a lot easier to use it with the big big pieces of meat Next, the last thing I want to talk about is the uh, searing how to sear or finish your meat when we cook sous vide you know when you take it out of the water bath it's really it's cooked completely but you still need to finish it because it looks kind of gray and ugly the outside does so you want to you want to sear it somehow and there's several different ways to do that you don't need to buy any extra equipment to do it you can actually use a cast iron pan and do it on your stovetop. Um, I, I do a lot of grilling. I have a couple different grills that I use. You can use a gas grill. You can use a charcoal grill. Um, you know, a lot of people will buy this particular piece of equipment, which is a Sears all that um, you can attach to a torch um, and with propane, you know, propane tank. And um, what this does, it just lights up. Like that and it this disperses the, the flame so you can actually sear your meat there's a lot of people who use that it's not necessary um, this particular setup right here costs over a hundred dollars because this is 75 
this is like 30 and then this is probably another 10 bucks um, and it's not the most optimal optimal way to sear as far as I'm concerned um, I can get a better result in, on a charcoal grill on a gas grill in my pan on the stove I even use a convection oven on larger pieces of meat like a turkey breast or a big chicken um, I can throw it in my convection oven just crank the heat up to 500 degrees let the oven get up real hot before you put the meat in there because you're not really wanting to cook the inside you're just wanting to get a good sear on the outside so same thing with your grills your gas grill your charcoal grill um, before you take the meat out of the sous vide go ahead and crank your grill up as hot as you can get it and then um, when you're done you know when this comes out of the bath your grill's nice and hot you can finish it up dry your meat off real well put some seasoning on it and sear it up so you don't need fancy equipment to do searing the, even this particular unit here this gourmet multi cooker I could actually sear in it but actually this is um, this whole little unit comes out but it's um, it's a non-stick uh, pan in here that actually gets up to 425 and I could sear in this if I wanted to it's not optimal but you could do it so it all comes down to personal preference you try what you like and then do it that way if you're not having good luck doing it on the stove try it on a grill if you don't want to do that try the sears all but um, um, they all work well and that's about it um, there's really no other equipment besides other little gadgets here and there little you can buy little weights that are made specially to go in the bag to keep the meat down you can buy little um, rubber insulators for some of these type of containers but none of that stuff is really necessary. I hope you guys enjoy these videos. I hope you get a lot out of them. Um, please go ahead and like this video. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already a subscriber. Hit the bell notification so that you uh, can find out when we have new videos posting up. Make sure you follow us on our Facebook group. We do a lot of interaction. We got It's growing every day. People ask questions on there. People post recipes and cooks and pictures. Um, but um, that's our most interactive um, channel that we have is our Facebook group fire and water cooking channel or fire and water cooking group we also have a Facebook page where I release some videos and some other stuff as well so follow us on Instagram and Twitter as well but thanks again guys join us for the next video and we'll see you soon Back as American cold. As I heads in the headlines